friend of mine was telling me a story when she went to Africa that she went to an orphanage. There were a hundred babies in one room, not a sound, quiet as could be. And she asked the people running it, wow, how do you, how do you train these babies? Because whenever I'm around babies, they're always crying and they're, uh, they're calling out. And the person replied, said, well, um, after a few days of crying, the babies learn that no one's coming. So they stop crying because it's of no use. If you look around right now, you can listen and hear all these chicks are crying. They're chirping for their mother. They still think it's going to be coming, but she's not. I want to reach out and like comfort them. But they're so afraid. There's so much fear in them. It would only make it worse. 200,000 here. There's just nothing you can do. This is. This is even worse than I expected. I, um, I've always wanted to see firsthand what, what I was advocating for. Why? I uh, just want to remind myself because before I get caught into that, it's just sort of these beautiful people I'm here with from animal equality who are advocating and fighting for the. I don't even want to say the rights of these of these chickens. But it's not rights. It's just some basic decency. This is far and away the most screeching life I could ever think of. One of the things that really stands out to me about this facility uh, is the proximity to this, these battery cages, this uh, extreme confinement. And over here, <clears throat> these wide open spaces where chickens probably be more used to living in. And I'm thinking about like, I pets at home that are chickens and they live open freely. We feed them watermelon and they have personalities. Some of them are a little more skittish. Some are very gregarious. Some are very curious. Some like to spend their time uh, doing dust ba baths and some like to peck looking for insects in the ground. Some like to, to roost and they're all, all very distinct and I can't see any way for any of these animals here, any of these chickens, to express their unique uh, personality. It's different about each of them. They're just it's like a monochromatic field of, of suffering and death and disease. Um, and I just know like how chickens can be. This is so far from the quality of life that I'm used to. You look at these barns and sheds and the bug bite and good, better, big, some other advertisements and it seems very nondescript, non-harmful. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Just coming out of there, I, I feel dirty. I feel like the inside, I want to clean the inside of my nose, my clothes, my hands and like shower and scrub myself. I just, the sense of like I've I've been like covered with the same crap that these animals and the filth they've lived in. And it's like it's not even just physical, it's like emotional, spiritual, and psychic. You know, it's like there's a um, there's a sense of feeling dirty. I drove about an hour here today, so maybe three hours of sleep last night best, and we're uh, here at the slaughterhouse, it's my first slaughterhouse I've ever been to. So yesterday, I think we saw uh, despair and some, some death from dead animals, but not the destruction. I just finished watching uh, slaughter process for the chickens here and um, the first time I've ever seen uh, chickens killed, any animals killed like that, uh, in tension and it was, it was 
really remarkable is uh, as I watched the Hangem and go through the process, it was so industrialized. There is, it was almost easier to watch 200 go through than if I saw just one. And I think that's part of part of like this whole animal agriculture system. It's so large and vast that it desensitizes me. I was almost feeling like some self-judgment about why am I not, how can I do this, just watch this and sit this. Uh, and not feel like I want to fall to the ground and cry. I, maybe it's a protective mechanism, maybe it's something about seeing multiple animals and not connecting to the, the one. Um, you know, as they go through this thing behind me, you know, I kind of wish and please lose all consciousness and then I'd see, see some go through and you can see the eyes still open and they're moving around before they hit the knife. Then after the knife, I see them still moving around before they go into the, the boiling water. And I'm like, oh, please don't be boiled alive, please. Cows are very gentle creatures and I feel very connected to them. And somehow I want to acknowledge that I, it's easier for me to feel empathy for a cow than a, than a chicken and also the process, as I've seen on video, is much more gruesome, so I'm a little concerned about how I'll, how I'll respond. Before they went in, sort of furtively petting them, petting one of them and watching them sort of connect with each other and smell each other and almost kiss each other. And to see them go into that, that box, just consumed by fear. And then see one by one each of the other their friends bleed to death and try to escape as best they could. It, the, I don't know, it's not like heart, I feel, it's just it's disgust. It's like a tightness in my throat and like a lump in my belly. And uh, almost surreal, like there's like a separation, like I wasn't like observing, but I wasn't there. Probably some kind of protective mechanism. Uh, I don't know what dreams I may have or nightmares about this, but was different. It was different. Before I was, I felt like the worst part was just the fear leading up to slaughter. And the slaughter was slightly, was somewhat quicker. Uh, this time it was, the entire process was despicable. Just cruelty at its worst. It's, I, I still don't, still don't hate them. I just feel a little more uh, sadness uh, about their apathy and the fact they didn't use little little kindness they maybe were holding uh, as an offering to to, to these, these cow and these pigs when uh, they were most most in need of mercy and most uh, in terror. One thing that, I don't know if I say it would surprise me, but I find really interesting, is that a system of indifference. Who's responsible and what's the appropriate response to that? Uh, and all I can really come up with is that I'm responsible. That I'm the only person that I know of that I can control to create a skilled, compassionate, 
response to this, to take action.